as we move to late childhood, we can see even more how we start to change and how our attitudes are totally different. So by late childhood, I'm really talking about the elementary years. We're reading books, we're playing video games, starting to play musical instruments, and riding two-wheel bicycles. And we draw again the morality cards. At this point in our development, most kids actually reach what's called the conventional stages of morality. Stage three is the idea you make decisions based on what other people expect and what will allow you to fit in with others. And stage four is the idea you make decisions based on what are the rules. This means that most kids at this point are making their choices the same way most adults make their choices. And that is they follow the rules that their parents, their teachers, their religion, their coaches, their schools, and the police officers have told them. This is why it is so important to talk to your kids about drugs, about sex, about cyberbullying, about online safety, about everything. Because if you give them the rules, they will most likely follow it. The only thing that might sway them away from following your rules is if they got alternate rules from results, or if they want to fit in with their peers and their peers are breaking the rules. So it's about fitting in with others and following the rules, and most people into adulthood keep this sense of morality. In terms of attachment, now not only do we have that attachment to our primary caregiver, but we're also starting to see those indices of secure, avoidant, and anxious play out in terms of our relationships to our teachers and to our friends. If you had a more secure, trusting relationship with your parent, you tend to have a more positive and close relationship with your teacher and friends. Versus if you're more avoidant and hang back and you don't trust people, you're more likely gonna be a loner. And if you're more that anxious, over preoccupied, overly attached person, you might become very clingy and intrusive and very um, stuck on the teacher and very clingy towards your friends. Now, in terms of Erickson's theory of psychosocial development, he believed this was an age of industriousness versus inferiority. What's happening here is kids are starting to get a sense of if they're a good student or a bad student. Can they accomplish law in school? Are they a good reader? Are they good at math? Are, are they a hard worker? Or are they the dunce or the class clown who's lazy? This is why participation trophies actually have a function sometimes. It might make kids who are struggling to achieve still have a sense of purpose and a sense of well-being and feeling like they can accomplish. And finally in this stage is our cognitive development. We're now away from the sensory motor and the pre-operational period and now we're in the concrete operational stage. I like the term concrete operational because it represents how we can do math operations in our head without counting on our fingers. And so we can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division in our head without even needing a pen and paper sometimes. We can just do it automatically. We also can master all that conservation stuff. That's no big deal. And if we're interested in logical problems, this is really the first point where we can start to understand the strategies to make sense. If you've ever played the Tower of Hanoi, it's a game where you have a series of different sized discs on some pegs and you have to relocate the entire tower to another peg. But you can only move one disc at a time and you can't put a larger disc on top of a smaller disc. Then there is also the riverboat problem. The riverboat problem is the idea of the farmer needs to cross the river with his wolf, his sheep, and his lettuce, but he only has room in his boat for one of them at a time. And so you can't leave the sheep and the lettuce alone, the sheep will eat the lettuce, you can't eat the fog, you can't leave the wolf and the sheep alone because the wolf will eat the sheep. And so there's a series of steps you have to go through. If you're interested in either one of these problems, I do have it uploaded in detail in my uh, Intro Psychology Unit 8 from last semester. All right, so we've gone through a lot in the board game. I'm happy to say the latter three stages go by a lot quicker, and that's because there's less developmental research in those stages at this point in time. But we've made it through prenatal, infant, and childhood development.